Well, more now on our top story, the fighting in Aleppo province. I'm joined from Doha by Martin Reedon. He's vice president of the Sufan Group, which provides strategic security intelligence to governments. And Martin, good to speak to you this morning. What Thank impact you. is the ongoing offensive by Assad forces near Aleppo having on the overall conflict in Syria? I think a major impact. Uh, the current strategy for Assad is to continue, continue this offensive, particularly in the north around Aleppo, fighting the rebel forces, uh, doing one of two things, either putting all the cards in Assad's hands so that you diminish um, the power of the rebel forces, the uh, uh, negotiating committee, uh, or in negotiations, or destroy the rebel forces completely so they're not even relevant anymore. Once that happens, there's only two parties left there in Syria. Uh, ISIS, the Islamic State, and Jabhat al-Nusra. And nobody's going to argue that uh, those are terrorist organizations that all of the uh, parties involved in this, whether it's the West, the Gulf states, Turkey, uh, Russia, Iran, uh, or Syria, all of them have an interest in uh, defeating Islamic State and, uh, and Jabhat al-Nusra. So push aside the rebels or diminish their uh, bargaining power first, and then go after what Assad looks at as the main enemy. Uh, and Martin, just give us an idea, how strategic has this been by Assad and, and the Russians to leave, as you say, the only options on the table post the fall of Aleppo of being Daesh and uh, al-Nusra? Well, strategically very important. I mean, the whole, uh, the whole tide of this conflict changed last September when Russia introduced the airstrikes. Uh, and then you saw uh, a, a, a tremendous uh, increase in Iranian support, uh, Lebanese Hezbollah, and then uh, Shiite militias from Iraq and Afghanistan are actually up there uh, supported by Iran. So uh, it, it, it's been significant. And, and Martin, over the past few days, we've had uh, talk out of some Gulf states, uh, UAE uh, and others, saying that they would send in troops to Syria to fight Daesh. Uh, do we need another group of soldiers in there fighting in this already asymmetric war? Well, no, not at this point. But I also think uh, both Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, those are the two countries that have gone on record saying that uh, if there was an international call, they would send troops on the ground to fight uh, Daesh. Keep in mind, uh, both Saudi Arabia and UAE are both very involved in Yemen right now, uh, which is more of a border uh, war for them, at least for the Saudis, to actually send troops into Syria where they don't even have a common border. I don't see that happen. This was mostly for public consumption. And Martin, just away from the fighting there uh, on the ground, the refugee crisis that's being caused by the strikes on Aleppo um, and the fact that Turkey seems to be keeping a lot of the refugees on the Syrian side of the border, is that a big departure in policy for Turkey? I don't think it's a departure, uh, departure of policy. They're, they're holding off right now. It, it's got to, you know, the, the refugees coming across, there has to be a place for them. Turkey has, has to be prepared. Turkey can't undertake this by themselves, and they've done a tremendous amount already in the last four years. This is going to take a tremendous infusion of money from Europe, from the United States, from the Gulf countries to support this. Other countries as well, uh, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, that have taken in tremendous amounts of refugees from Syria. So uh, these countries can't be expected to take on all of that, uh, that, that, that challenge of, 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 of housing and feeding and taking care of the refugees. They're going to need help from outside. Uh, well, Martin Ridden from the Sufan Group, a pleasure as always. Thank you for joining us.